Today on Garage Insider TV, Luke works back on the Del Rey and checks out its spots. But that's not all. We'll get an update on the Chevelle project as well as what to do when a oil pan plug is stripped. Next, Inside the Garage. So we're back on the Ray. So now what we're going to do is actually start cutting out the spot welds over the braces that have been left out, you know, left over from cutting. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. You have spot weld cutters like this one here. This one comes with a various amount of, a copious amount of cutters, right? No big deal. It comes with a center punch. Now this one does not collapse. It's not spring loaded. But normally what you would do is take your center punch, punch it in, and then this one you would drill a hole, like an eighth inch hole, and you just drill through the floor and hopefully stop before you get to the brace. But I promise you, you're gonna hit the brace and sometimes you're gonna go through it just the way it is. But you also have these other ones. This one is spring loaded and you can take, and you, can, you don't have to drill that eighth inch hole. You're just using the center punch, pressing down on your drill and drilling through the, through the weld. Now, these are great, don't get me wrong. I've used them before, they're fantastic. But when you don't have money, drill bits. You find a drill bit that, that's a little bit bigger than the spot weld that you have and you just use your drill bit. You just have to pay attention. It's like doing a countersink. You're going to drill down enough to get the spot weld and then you pry up on the sheet metal and it comes off. I've had people say, oh no, you don't use a drill bit. That's not way to do it. Ah. I'm telling you, you use what you have. Sometimes you have to get creative, think out of the box. And if you've got this really cool drill bit set, you can pick a spot weld cutter. I'm calling it a spot weld cutter. You can pick the appropriate spot weld cutter. So I'm back on the Del Rey. Oh wait, I'm sorry, the Ray. I'm gonna get my drill and we'll do it. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking for the spot welds. A lot of times what they do is they have this, the spot weld is it's like a, a C-clamp almost. And they would put it on both sides and it would fuse and it would just melt it. So you have a little circle. Like right here you can see one, here you can see one, here you can see one, here. There's another one right here. So I'm just knocking off the, the dirt and the rust looking for the low spot. Now something else you guys got to remember, we're going to do this, but we also have some really cool stuff coming up. It's a totally different project. You wouldn't expect it. That's right. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Let me get this all set up, and I'm going to show you what I mean how these spot weld cutters work. How the cutter works versus the versus the drill. I mean, I got the stuff here. I might as well just show you guys. So you see how it works. Makes it easier for you, makes it easier for me. And then you can watch the montage. The montage, baby, the montage. Get this. See, being that we know this one is spring-loaded, right? Remember? Right? Remember that. It's spring-loaded. But now, this is where having two drills comes in really handy. I got to get a new one. I got to get another drill. Maybe I can get someone to back me up with some drills here. Get like 20 of them. Be out of control. Drills for everyone. Ah! They're running wild in the streets. So I've got my... I've got my my hole started, and then all you do is this. See, and it cuts the weld. And I'll lift it up a little, see? You can see how it separates. Oh, it wasn't broke. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. Sometimes it doesn't cut all the way, and that's why I like this style of, uh, of what, is it? what are these again? They're uh, some kind of putty knife. I forgot what they're called, but they're a putty knife. But I like this one 
because it's got this hard top and you can hit on it. Because sometimes you got to get in there and you got to, you know, bust the spot weld loose. So, you, you know, you're going to work it around, right? I'm going to do one. I'm going to do one like I, like I was just, I was getting ready to say. Here, hold on. Let's do this. Maybe I can get this one cut a little bit. Yeah. See, this is why you need the second drill. Don't worry. I'm going to get the second drill. Just not right now. <laughs> Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you if I used the other one. If I went the other method. You ideally want to pick a drill close to like what the spot weld is. You know, the size, which is what we have here. We still need our center punch. And then you just take your drill. Right? Now, I got it drilled through. I can feel it starting to go through. I take this and I pry on it. There was a little piece left. I could pry up or I could have hammered it out. So right here's one. And this is the other reason why I like the spot weld, the, uh, the drill bit actually. It's, it's quicker. You only need one drill. And you can go through and actually spot, hit all the uh, center punch all your holes, your spot welds I mean. So now you take this, I intentionally didn't drill all the way through, but you can do this. And you, you just get what's left over, the spot weld. So you want to keep that in mind. The way you're going to do it is pretty simple. And this is the big reason why I like using just the drill bit, because now all I'm going to do is find my spot welds, like right here's one, hit it with the center punch. Hit it with the center punch, find the next one. Right here's one. Right there. And I know where it's at. And all I gotta do is just run down the line. and you don't have to go crazy just take your time and and just knock it out slowly and you'll be good at the end of the day that's all that matters is how you come out see look at that man i'm liking this here we go Now, the reason, this goes back to what I said in the other episode. See, when I drilled the holes, yeah, I ran across here, I can weld that up. But now I have access to the brace, and then it's just a matter of cleaning it all out, putting some weld through primer in here, and then when I put the new floor in, the brace is already there, and I'm okay. And I can clean everything out. There you go. And you just keep on going.
You go. Add it away. Got some gummage here. That was quicker than I thought. What would work really nice and I'm going to get is one of those spring-loaded center punches. Just find it, slam it, boom, done. It's better than using the hammer and chisel. I mean, better than using the hammer and the center punch. So now you take this. Little piece left. Done. Got it. Now there's another one right there. So I'll get that one. And there's one there. We'll get these two and we'll get the last of them.
See now, it's loose. If I were to cut this right here, it would be out. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty much loose all around in here. The bottom's loose. I mean, it's, it's, see, it's all loose, right? All of it. The brace goes down into here. And then this, the only reason when that piece came out is because I was, I cut right here. So I was able to take it out because it, it's, you lose it here. But that piece I got to get, and this one, it's loose but too. But you see how it works. It's just time consuming. And it's not a big deal, but I prefer the drill bit over the spot well cutter just because you, you're just using a drill, you have, your, you have your putty knife, you want to get the thick one, the thicker one with the edge. You can always sharpen it, and a center punch. But if you actually had to spring load a center punch, you can just bam, bam, bam. You're, you can punch them all out and you're done. And that's really it. But right now, I'm going to show you guys our quick, I'm going to call it the day project. I'm going to show you our day project for this episode. And then when I get done with the day project, I'm going to come back here and get this thing going. So when you see it next time, the floor will be out. And then I'm going to tell you the surprise I have for this X-frame. Let's just say bye-bye on the X-frame. It's going to be phenomenal. I'm telling you. So that's where we are. All right? So let's go. You shall not pass! That's for you Lord of the Rings geeks. But we're not doing Lord of the Rings. We're doing exhaust. And this is Cook's headers. Everything they make is 304 stainless. These headers are for their LS swap kit. I used to buy the headers from them that were for the G8, the Pontiac G8. So these look eerily familiar. But either way, they're a nice mid-length header and they work for what I'm doing, especially when you're lowering a car really hard. You, don't you just don't want long tube headers unless you're going to tuck everything up really tight. So I got the headers. I got all the hardware. It's all stage 8 hardware. Good stuff. And they are also stainless, so make sure when you put the bolts in the heads to use some anti-seize. And then I got some 3-inch random bends. Couple 45s, couple 180s, and 490s. That way I can build the entire exhaust. This is for my collectors. Slides on here. It's a ball fitting. Like I said, all the hardware comes with it. Now, I forgot to ask them for mufflers, but I will take care of that and we'll see them later. But that's what we got. Like I said, Cook's headers. And you know what's really good about Cook's headers? Founded in 1962 by Papa Cook's. Rest in soul. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. But here's the thing. It's made in America, just like that guy up there in the boondock talking about the Silverado. This stuff is made in America, even though the Silverado's not. But that's what we have today. Exhaust. <laughs> Garage Insider TV fan, Monday morning racer here, and I have got a new project for Lee. It's my car! No, it's not a new car, it's not the price is right, and there's a lot of work that's got to be done on this. There is actually the possibility of a blown head gasket, cracked head, worse, cracked block. I don't know how it has survived that, like 10,000 miles on it. It's been my vehicle experimentation. But, last week we were going to change the oil, and the plug is stripped. So, after 250,000 miles, two years of ownership, this good old car of mine, a Kia Soul, we've got some work to do. Lou, what are we gonna do? Well, it's pretty easy. We're gonna take a, get the bolt out, then we're gonna take a valve, see if it fits, which it won't, because I know this is metric, the valve thread is, is standard. So, we're gonna take a nut, Drop the oil pan, weld the nut on the back side of the oil pan, screw in the valve, bada boom, bada bing, you roll them back down the road. Roll them back down the road. You gotta roll to the table and show them about that valve. Yep. I'm gonna stay right here. Muggle! All right, so let's take a look at the valve that we're gonna use. This is a Fuboto. Or should I say, Fumoto? I like that better. Fumoto! This is our Fumoto valve. It's, it's a ball valve. That's what it comes down to. Now, they make these for probably every application in the world. If you go on their website, type in what you have. It's going to ask you for the model, the year, all that stuff. It's going to tell you what it came with, and then it gives you the, the part number that you need to get. And they're really cool. And I actually learned about these years ago 
in the heavy equipment world. And quite honestly, I'd forgotten about him till I was messing with my friends Kenworth and I saw his, I was like, dude, that's what I need on my cars. Because the problem you have with cars now is everybody goes to get their oil change and eventually it's gonna be stripped like the newest thing in the shop over my shoulder and then you have to do something. And some of these newer cars have aluminum oil pans which means they have a steel threaded insert and when they screw that up, <laughs> they're going, oh, you gotta buy a new oil pan. But if you use the valve, valve you won't have that problem because it's just a ball valve. It's a 90 degree turn and the oil comes out. How fabulous is that? All right, so when we get to the car, I'm gonna explain what we're gonna do. So cool. yo, yo, fumoto, egg roll, sake. First of all, I would like to apologize in advance for the audio. When we were doing the shot, for some reason the camera died and we had to replace the batteries. Oh wait, maybe it was because the batteries were dead. But anyway, moving on. This is Lee's Kia, or Monday Morning Racer, should I say. So what it is, is the, the drain plug is stripped out. So I took a screwdriver, wedged it in behind the drain plug, between the oil pan and the drain plug, and I'm trying to work it out. And at first it looked like it wasn't turning, but the more pressure I put on it, I was actually able to get it past the threshold of where the threads were messed up and it started to work its way out. So once I did that, I just kept going. I had to get the, uh, I had to get the catch can for the oil. It's coming into the shot and there it is. And then I kept going. See, at first I thought it wasn't going to work, you know, because it was a long shot, but now we're, it's smooth sailing. This bad boy is running like a ship in the ocean. It's cruising along. The oil is going to come out here in one second. So be patient. It's coming. It's coming. And uh oh, screwdriver's away. Got the hands on it and get ready for it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, the money shot all over the place. There's even a little oil on the floor. It got a little messy there, but that's okay. And you know what? This is like one of those Chinese kung fu movies from the 70s. The voice doesn't meet the mouth. So it's even more fun. So I'm going to let it drain. There's a proxy. It's funny because they, Kia says it's like 3.78 quarts. So call it four, you know? Now here's the weird thing about this. We looked for a gasket. I looked for a gasket. Monday morning racer looked for a gasket. And everybody said there was no gasket. We could make one if we wanted. So that, that's where we are with that. So now, this is a little plastic guard, 10 millimeter, and it had five bolts on it. So I'm taking that out so I can actually access the oil pan better. Because probably a quarter of the oil pan was covered by this plastic guard. So I wanted to get that out of the way in order to get the pan off. So listen to some music while this is going on. And then I'll be back in a second. Do, do, do. I don't care if it rains or freezes as long as I got my plastic Jesus riding on the dashboard of my car. He don't slip and he don't slide cause his ass magnetized riding on the dashboard of my car. He keeps me from tragedy riding down the dashboard. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. All right, so now we're back at it, right? As you can see, I got a couple bolts left. I know that, mu that musical interlude was really awesome for you guys. It was awesome for me. So this thing should be off in a second. I'm thinking I'm on the last one in this shot. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So we're cruising along. Yep, it's moving around really good. So this must have been the last one. I, didn't, I bet you guys didn't think I could make that much noise for, for that amount of time. It was like a minute and a half. I know you find it hard to believe. Come on, hurry up, man. Get that thing off. Get that plastic off of there. Let's go. You ain't got all day. Come on. Oh, sorry. I was yelling at myself. So hold on, it's coming. Yep, this is the last one. 
you know, this car spent six years up in New York State. So everything's a little rusty, but not as bad as I thought it would be. All right. So that's the oil pan. Now, the oil pan also has 10 millimeter bolts on it, but they were a little bit tighter. So I'm going to get the 3 8 drive ratchet on it and start taking it off. That's our oil, that's our drain plug. Now, there is a better shot of it, but it's pretty gnarly. Lee's got a better shot of it later on. You'll see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a valve in it. We're not going to retap it. So it's going to take a little bit more work to get it done. But once we get it done, it'll be, it'll be righteous. So I'm, I'm surveying the situation here, looking at it, going, okay, this is what I need. And now I walk off. Give a little love tap. Man, that thing is stuck on there. Whoa. The love tap is a little old pen that gets to bed to us. Uh, has to be beat on. You know what? I'm just going to take this one off here. These last three I left. And get, I can get it better from here. And this work might work my way to. I mean, there's nothing holding it on after these last two bolts. All right, let's do it. Hopefully, you just won't jump out. Man, this is crazy. It's nuts. That thing is stuck on there. My God. You know what? I'm gonna have to get. Let me get another screwdriver. I'm gonna have to work my way around it. I think. My way around it. So here's the thing. This oil pan is so stuck on there. It's, it's, there's, I don't think there's a gasket. So what I'm gonna have to do is just work my way around and hopefully it just won't jump off. And I don't, I gotta be careful because I don't wanna bend it. Cause you know, we gotta keep the oil pan. The structural integrity, the shape. So I just gotta work my way around. Oh, here we go. Now we're making progress, baby. Oh, there, I think there is a gasket. What is that? Something there. In this just a skoosh. Man. Oh wait, there's one more bolt. Hold it. Hold it. Thought I got them all. It's still tight though. I've never had an oil pan fit that good. Never. Man. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. Look, 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 look. Look when he ripped up the threads. Dude, that's crazy. I've never seen that before. Yeah, this whole thing's messed up. It looks like it's just silicone. I don't see any kind of gasket. Yeah, there's no gasket. It's just silicone. All right, so let's go over to the table. Come on, Lee, let's go over to the table. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so the next step is I'm gonna take this bolt. I'm gonna grind this little flange down here. See how it sticks up a little? I'm gonna grind it down, leave just the little plate area there. Then I'll take a bolt with another nut and I'll screw the nut down so it's flush against this plate and then I'll weld it. Of course, this is all be clean, but then I'll weld it and that makes us 
because we know this nut fits the whoa valve. We'll just put it in there and we're ready to rock. Boom. See now what this does is it gives me a nice clean surface to weld the nut to. That's what it gives me. So I hit this with a file, clean it out a little bit, and then we're ready to rock. So while you guys ponder life, I'm going to get the welding machine set up and we'll be ready to rock. Just got to get the anodized off. Anod Anodize. And 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 dies. <laughs> All right, I got the anodize off. While I was doing it, I had a really, really stupid epiphany. I guess it would be, you know, that song Frank Zappa's "Baby Snakes." Dun 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 dun. Baby snakes. Well, this would be dun 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 dun. We want the small one. If you want the small jam nut, that's what we want. Ah, cramp, cramp, cramp. A little dehydrated, I'm guessing. Or bananas. Shit, I cleaned the wrong one. That's what I did. I should have cleaned that one. I wasn't thinking. So we're going to get that off anyway. No big deal. Wasn't thinking. Again, squirrel. Now we take this, which is here. Put that there. Now we just weld it. We just weld it all around here. All the way around. That's what we'll do. And then we take the bolt out and then the valve goes in from this side and it sits right up against the oil pan and we're good to go. So that's the plan. All right, so I got my PPE on. I got my cheaters, or as they call them, fish bowls, my rod. I played with the machine, got it set where I think I need it to be. Let's go for it. Have it down, baby! Skinner! Got it. That last little dab almost got it. Got it. Got it. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> that came off. Yes. Everything turns. That's the best feeling. The worst thing is you go to take the bolt out and it doesn't turn because you welded it. <laughs> ah! 10 seconds away from an all day affair, but I've got a hammer. Got my hammer 
and a hammer in the morning and a hammer in the evening and a hammer all day. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Show you some. See how this is like, it's, it's, it's sharper. It's, it's not really blunt like that one. This one I'm gonna use so I get a little bit, a little bit more technical. I learned a long time ago that a lot of your older hammers, they, they're actually, they have this, it's, it's more of a radius than this. And you can see the difference. This is kind of, it's kind of more pointy than this one. A lot of your old ones, now this is a new hammer. I mean, it's from China. So I got it because I like that. And then this is one of my older ones. I don't even know how old this one is. I think it was my, this one was my dad's, I think. So it's probably a hundred years old. But I'm actually on the search for these hammers, and I have a couple at home that are actually pointier, like someone actually doctored them. So when you're doing stuff like this, this really works for you. It's a boring montage, yeah, yeah. All right, now, done. All that's left is change your oil filter, put some oil in it. Let it set up a little bit, and what I like to do, once you get it all done, run it through a heat cycle or two, and then go back and check the pan bolts. Because you have to remember, you have aluminum and a steel pan, and the bolts are steel. So the heating and contraction, some of these might get loose and cause it in a, an oil leak. And then you're good to go. Just do it, you know, tighten it up, and you're good. Now don't over tighten it, because these are only 10 millimeter bolts, so it doesn't take a lot to mess it up. And then you're definitely 10 seconds away from a day job. Other than that, we're done. So we'll knock out the oil filter and move on. Ooh. I don't want to make a mess. Whoa! Slid right out of my hand. Try not to make a mess, and what do I do? Almost drop the filter. <laughs> Jeez. Real quick, most of you guys probably know, but always put some oil around the uh, seal there just to keep it from, uh, you know, locking down on you. Spin that bad boy on. Where'd that rag go? Oh, it's on the floor. That's all right. I'll get it. You want to go tight and then go quarter turn. Boom, done. Stick a fork in it. Boom! I believe it's time to put it on the ground. 
and dump some oil in it. Well, first, we gotta get these lights out of the way. And this oil container. Ah, there it is. Yeah. I don't want to get overzealous with the oil. But then we could always use to check the FOMO valve. FOMO. We could always use it to check the FOMO valve. I'm calling that four. Boom! It's supposed to take like 3.78 quarts. Duh. Guess what? Four quarts. Done. Stick a fork in it. 